Okay, so good morning all. I feel that I'm in the after party, so I'm glad to join you from here, from Zichron, which is in North Israel. Uh, I can't see you, so I hope you are there. Someone here? Okay, never mind. So uh, just to remind you and to say hello to all the people with, next to me in the screens, in Zooms. Hi, I, I feel that I know you all. So as uh, just a reminder, my name is Aurelia. I can see you again, that's nice. Okay, so um, this is a reminder to who, uh, my name is Nama Katz and I've been teaching in non-academic college for the last 14 years. I'm the head of uh, academic teaching and training unit, which is a new unit in uh, ONO. Another thing that you still don't know about me, that I'm a true UDL believer, and I'm going to tell you about it because I'm looking for any opportunity to talk about it, so be warned, uh, but I'm not alone. Uh, just tell me if uh, you see the next slide because of the Zoom uh, bug, you know? Okay, thank you. So I'm a part of a team that aims to include inclusive teaching. I know for the last two days that all of us are into it. So I'm going to give a few examples to the thing that we've been through for the last two days. Um, so I know that we're all talking the same langu language, but I'm a part of a group. I can, you can see here Sheila that you met on the first day, or wait, you met, you met on the first day, and another friend, uh, Neta. Uh, she is not part of the team, but she's teaching uh, uh, inclusive learning. So my goal for today is to give you the basic knowledge, even though I know that you know, uh, you know about UDL, but I just want us to talk on the same page. As to, so I'm trying to give you a uh, basic knowledge of universal design for learning and sharing our experience in honor in and to encourage some insights and hands-on tools to optimize your teaching for all of your students, okay? Uh, yesterday uh, in Levinsky, uh, we talked about uh, uh, showing and sharing the goals in the beginning of the lecture. So all of us will know, uh, oh, thank you. I can see, uh, I can see you, Ellie. That's nice. Yeah, I will share it with the uh, partner. Great. So just to be realistic, because we are trying to be, uh, I can promise you that in the end of this short presentation, you will not know uh, into depth what's UDL, but UDL is not, not all or nothing. I hope you will able to take at least one principle and implement it tomorrow morning. That is my personal goal. So just being on the same page again. Uh, that's an opportunity to show you, by the way, uh, the common universal sign for UDL, if you don't know it. Um, uh, it's, uh, it means that it's the, the slide is UDL compliance and the slide contains something from the UDL principles. You will see it again and again. So I want you to know what, is it, what does it mean, three circles. Okay. Please uh, stop me if something is unclear or if you can't see anything, something in the slides. So I'm getting back to our class. You, you saw this class on the first day, okay? Just wanted you to see uh, the diversity. We talked about two days, we talked about uh, diversity. So getting back to our familiar and diverse learner. So I'm on a lecture, I'm standing in front of 30 or sometimes 80 and more students and every one of them is different and has a different way of learning. Okay. UDL tell me to be aware of those differences from the beginning, from, from the point that I'm designing the course, when I'm writing the syllabus, we talked about it yesterday, through the actual teaching and choosing a variety of assignments, we are going to talk about it uh, in the next few minutes. I'm trying to enable the, the largest, largest range of students to bring themselves and to be uh, the best they can. That's my, my goal, my personal goal as a believer in UDL. So this is a map of our meeting. We will use it in the presentation and, the UD, uh, and, as a UD, uh, and it's a UDL uh, principle. It helps the students to get more information and orientation regarding to what expected. Further, furthermore, if one of the students is, spa is spacing out, they know it doesn't happen to you, just my students. But if someone space out, uh, or wandering within, within his thoughts, 
Uh, this visual map will help him to return. The map is graphic and will appear in every slide, so it will support the orientation. Okay, I think that also in the uh, presentation we had on, uh, on the first day, we had this map in the, um, in the corner of the slide, so everyone will know what's going on. We're trying to help all the students, all the learners, to know exactly what's going on and what are the expectations from them. As you know me, of course, you are going to stand up right now and to do something. Uh, I'm an occupational therapist, so I know that you can sit a, a very long uh, uh, time in your chair. So I would like you to scan, uh, to, to take a picture of the uh, QR code and answer the question. I would like to remind you, there is no correct and incorrect answer. Don't worry about spelling mistakes and the answers are anonymous. While you're answering the questions, I, will, I, I would like to say behind the, behind the scene, the idea is to give you, uh, to allow you to be very comfortable and very safe as learner. So I try to anticipate what may uh, cause you uncomfortable feelings. And that's what I'm doing with my students. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to answer the question. I'm going to talk about inclusive teaching. And I want you to talk about the possible barrier. Uh, I can't see who writes what, it's anonymous. So it's allow people who don't feel very comfortable uh, talking in front of a classroom, in, in front of their friends. We talked about it yesterday, about cultural and age issues. Uh, so uh, I, 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 want, I want to give them some opportunities to uh, ex express themselves and not just by talking uh, in the classroom. So it's a lack of uh, resources. You said it's students uh, uh, were trying to how to engage the students, diversity in a classroom, inclusion, time uh, it's time consuming. It, it's need planting, uh, planning, awareness, not to be rock, not recognizing it. Uh, awareness, time needs to plan. Okay, I give you another minute to write down. Inclusion, special differences. Okay. While you're looking at the board, can someone say um, something about the things that you wrote? What, what comes into your eyes right now? Do you have any mics you can talk? Not you're not sharing, Nana. Sorry? You're not <coughs> sharing your screen. You are not, I'm not sharing. Okay, that's a good start. Okay, uh -huh. wait a minute. Can you see right now the board? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So look at the board and tell me what do you see? Very diverse. Diverse. Okay. I see that the board has different colors. Some okay. are more clear and some are very hard to see, especially when okay. they're also small letters in all the things that. So uh, you are talking about accessibility. And about maybe there is a student in the classroom that can that can see all the colors. Okay, thank you, Judy. I know your voice, and I know what's important to you. That's great. Okay. Something else that you can see right now. There's no one word that's uh, that stands that's out. Which is yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's amazing. There is no one word that coming back again and again, except of awareness, because the word that is bigger is a word that a few people wrote down. So we're saying it's all about awareness. UDL or being inclusive is uh, plenty of it. It's uh, uh, being aware to the need or the goal to be um, inclusive. What does it mean to be inclusive? So I'm getting back to my presentation. It will take you me five seconds, I think. Or maybe 10. Wait a minute. Yeah, I know I can't, you can't see it, the presentation. Do you see the presentation now? So yeah, I can see it in the big, but that's great. It's very uh, uh, accessible for me. So uh, as I said uh, before, I'm trying to show you again, sorry about that. Uh, I'm trying to show you um, the idea behind it, I'm trying to make you feel very comfortable 
uh, and not uh, stressed out. So I'm trying to anticipate and to give you a few ways to answer my questions and to be uh, participative in, in the classroom. So that's UDL, uh, that's UDL principle as we saw right now. So some of us tend to connect associative diversity to disability. I want to take apart this connection uh, if it existed in, in someone's head and to declare that diversity represents the richness of the society and in general and classroom in particular. Uh, that is what makes us unique. I assume that every one of us aims to become an inclusive lecturer, we, uh, which means to reach every student to know, no matter uh, who he is or she, of course, uh, it's easier said than done. If we are being honest with ourselves, and I'm trying to be, uh, most of us know how to reach limited types of students. UDL is a state of mind for me. Uh, I'm not doing it all the time. I, I'm aiming to be, I'm inspiring to be a UDL and it provides us with a practical principle we can easily apply and become all of our students' lectures, okay? So diversity, as we spoke, it, uh, for the, spoke about it all, all, in the last, on the last two, two days, is um, diversity includes all the aspects with students or people differ from other, and diversity obviously affects on the uh, academic achievements and success. So how can we uh, deal diversity? I'm not, not going to be very long about it, but we can do three things. We can ignore it, okay? Someone in the, in the, the room right now would like to ignore it, I hope no, I, I can see nobody uh, raise his hand, well done, okay? But we can uh, explain it, it sounds log logical, it's equal, we are ignoring everyone uh, and also the people who need the accessibility and uh, we are trying to give, uh, we have a practical consideration, it's very uncomfortable to give the answer for all. Uh, we can acknowledge it, but not, uh, but expecting, but expect our students to help to comply with the standard and not giving any adjustments. And we can understand diversity. UDL helps us to understand diversity by depth. I would like to show you right now, uh, I hope it will work. I would like to show you a short clip, two minutes quick clip with cute kids because it always wins the battle. Can you hear? Dear teacher, I know it doesn't always seem like it, but I really do want to listen and learn. Yes, my brain is coming again. So this is what I'd like you to know about me. I have to move or I really can't pay attention. Even though I'm not looking at you, I can still listen to what you're saying. If you tell me, sit up straight, now I have to use all of my brain to do just that. It makes me feel sad when you tell me to try harder, even though I've already tried as hard as I can. I actually listen better when I'm rocking in my chair. When you give me a bunch of directions, I start to think I will never remember all of this. Sometimes my mom and dad end up doing all of my homework. So here's how you could maybe help. Let me get up and move while I'm learning. Let me look wherever I want when you talk to me. Let me rock or slouch in my chair. No matter what. Please don't take away my recess. Give me a hug. I can do it all by myself. And stretch and very short. Just ask me, what does your brain need right now? And one more thing. My brain might be different than yours, but it's still amazing. Sincerely, your student. Your student. Your student. Your student. Your student. Okay, so I can't say anything more uh, strong than that. 
Uh, as a cute girl, uh, in the end of the movie, uh, reminded us, my brain, my student's brain, might be different, but it's still amazing. The UDL approach, based on the inclusive universal design, and to understand UDL, UDL we have to say a few words about universal design. Universal design or inclusive design is a design uh, composition of the environment so that it can access, understood, and used by the greatest extent of possible for all, by all people. So to understand it, I want you to look uh, at, the, at the, this picture. It, it was taken in, in Tel Aviv. You can go over there and see it by yourself. What do you see in the picture? What is it? Yes, okay. What else can you see in the picture? Yeah. Okay. A ramp? The rail that assists you to go up. Okay, so there is a ramp and something that can help you to go up. Something else that you can see? This is a depth Different sizes. Different sizes, okay. So the core value of universal design is, uh, uh, and later we can apply it to UDL, is that everyone has a basic right to get this, the same services in the same way, without announcing it to anyone uh, and saying, I, I, need, um, I need some assistance. It is easier to understand when we are looking, about, uh, looking on uh, a physical uh, disability or a pe person that uh, is with a, a wheelchair so in this picture, it's a real picture in a t Tel Aviv, there is a ramp integrated with a total design. So a person with a wheelchair, but also a mother with a stro stroller or a person uh, with eye impairment, or if you're trying to ride your bike, all of us can choose to use the same path by choice, okay? It is not signed out and it's not symbol and it's not uh, a special path. So that's easy to grasp when we're talking about something that is very physical. But I'm just raising the question that I know that I can't answer right now very deeply. But how can we create a ramp to people dealing with different kinds of difficult, difficulty that we can't see, like cognitive or emotionally? Um, I would like to remind us all that every one of us and in, in, in every one of us need, uh, and our students also, can cope with this kind of difficulty here and now without any known diagnostic or disability, I have to say yet, okay? So that's universal design, the right of every one of us, of us to get the same services. So what's UDL? That, that's a very common uh, picture that uh, explain why UDL. What can you see in the picture? Different animals. Sorry, different animals. Okay, what else? Very good, by the way. What else? They're all expected to do the same thing. They're all expected to do this. And can they do the same thing? No, they're different. Okay. So that's UDL. Uh, we have different students differing from another uh, in their abilities because every one of them can do something great. Uh, by himself. Uh, they are very unique and they have barriers, but the assignment they get from this lecture is the same. So why UDL? UDL is, uh, why is the first question that UDL's approach raises. The students must understand why they are learning whatever I'm teaching them. They have to understand why the material is relevant to them very often we use the term relevant teaching in learning, in uh, academic learning, but we aim always to be relevant and UDL suggests us, I remind you the, the goals of in the beginning, always starting with understanding, me at the lecture, understanding and announcing it uh, in, this, in every point that you can. The student has to understand the why. The UDL is an approach that minimize barriers uh, in learning and maximizing learning for all students. So I'm, I'm reminding you, we have 80. Every one of them needs for me something di completely different sometimes, okay? So another, the most basic definition is of uh, UDL, Universal Design Learning, truly knowing the concept you are going to teach 
And uh, regarding, uh, I'm talking to uh, all of us as lecturers, we have to know the concept, we have to know what we are going to teach and to present that con uh, concept in different ways. So I'm not just talking about it, I'm trying to use a uh, 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 variety of options to teach the same thing, okay? While encouraging them, the students, to engage and express their knowledge in different ways. Reminding you the Padlet, the Mentimeter, talking in the first day, uh, a pair, uh, think per share, talking with your uh, partner and not with the lecture. So I'm trying to give the, uh, by UDL, I'm trying to give a few uh, ways to express myself and not just standing out and talking. Getting back to the picture, every one of our students needs for me something very different. Some of them uh, can, uh, will, will feel it very easily. They have to he hear me. Some of them must see something. Some of them has to do it alone or with a partner. It's my responsibility to think about the way that I'm teaching and I have to give a, a few ways. It's not enough just getting in the classroom and being excellent as a teacher, uh, but not, uh, uh, not uh, uh, being uh, appropriable to uh, all the students. So I'm not going to get into a very uh, um, complicated, uh, I'm going to show you a clip in a minute, but Universal uh, re refer to the background, the, st the strengths, the needs, and the interest of the uh, students. And in the curriculum and in the way that I'm teaching, I have to take everything, um, who are my students, into account and to allow them to bring themselves in the best way. So that, that's what I'm aiming to do. I'm, I'm aiming so they, they would be excellent uh, in my classroom. Uh, the design is not to uh, design to, I, I'm trying to be the cognitive ramp, okay? Not uh, talking, to the mer talking to the emergent and not to the standard, to the very uh, narrow standard. I'm trying to talk to uh, the wider range that I'm ca I can. I'm trying to put a sub subtitles. I'm sorry that I didn't do it today because uh, of the time, but I'm trying to do that. And learning, I would like to, as, as lecturers, we're trying to gain knowledge, skills, and enthusiasm, uh, all of them together in one class, in one lesson that I'm teaching. Um, and I have to admit, one size does not fit all. I'm trying to encourage them and engage uh, a diverse learner that every one of them want to hear from me something else. One of them needs me to rate, to, um, to say out his name, uh, out loud his name, and the other one has uh, asks me to do it after word one on one. So I have to give a, a few ways um, to bring their whatever they need to feel great in my classroom. So the idea, and in a minute I'll show you another clip, and I think that we'll finish with that. Uh, rather than uh, the, the idea of uh, the core idea of the UDL, rather than the idea to tra transfer the individu individual and to fit into the system, we're trying to tra transfer the si transform the system so an individual with the differences can be accommodated without an effort in the system. In the system, so we are trying to uh, make it the norm, the, uh, the accessibility or uh, um, the diversity, we're trying to make it the norm and not uh, something that is, is very unique. Um, and I would like to show you another video. Please tell me if you have any difficulty with hearing it, raise your hand. Imagine the makeup of a classroom. Can you hear? includes students from all walks of life, with physical and sensory deficiencies. No, we can't hear. You can't? Mental health challenges chronic illnesses and attention deficit disorder. If you put all of those people in a class where a professor talks for an hour, many of those students will struggle to focus, to engage and learn. Their environment is not fully accessible to them. But if you add PowerPoint, group work, online tools, digital engagement and flexibility, you begin to connect with many more of those students, allowing them to interact with the material and express themselves in ways that they are comfortable and efficient with. The classroom can become any for all students, not only students with disabilities, but non-traditional students, second language learners, and the whole diversity of students that we see in one class.
Universal Design for Learning adapts curricula delivery, instruction, and assessment and proactively meets the learning needs of a diverse student population. Universal Design for Learning has the potential to benefit everyone. Rather than always trying to transform the individual to fit into the system, the idea is to transform the system so that individuals with differences can be accommodated without effort within that system. Universal design encourages us to consider how we can help students access university services in a sustainable way. There is so much more to explore and put in place, and such UD initiatives benefit the entire Miguel community. The way the OSD provides accommodations currently means that they have to provide needs with a note taker in every class, every semester. Universal design would mean that the notes are available to everyone including myself, without any special accommodations. This makes sense both economically and is far more sustainable. I think that's okay, I'll stop here. But we heard from the uh, lectures and from the students that there are very simple things that we can do to be more accessible to the students and to adopt the UDL principles. I'm just I just want to show you that's a map of UDL principles. I'm going to uh, give you it uh, in one minute because I have no, uh, I, ha I have very short time and I will be happy to send uh, whoever wants to get it uh, through mail. But trying to be UDL, I'm going to answer if I want to see if I'm UDL um, uh, believer in, in my classroom, I have to answer three questions in every lesson, in every course that I'm teaching, I have to engage the students by asking the why. Um, we're trying to build different engagement and motivation opportunities that suits a variety of students. So I, as a lecturer, I have to think all the time about more options, variety of options, uh, motivating them, engaging them. It's not just one way that I know I have to, um, to adapt to see who are the learners and to adjust to, to my learner. We, I have to ask the question, what? to choose the, uh, different kind of ways to give the information, to deliver the information, to work on the skills. I'm giving the students information in a variety of formats using different teaching method. Okay, not just uh, lecturing, not just presenting, it's all about a variety of uh, models. And the how, the how uh, is how can I assess a student, not just by one standard, by allowing them to, to express themselves in a few ways, the students know, show the knowledge and understanding in different ways and not just in the traditional way. I'm trying to think all the time, uh, what is my goal? What am I trying to assess? And if there is another way to assess the same, to assess the same thing with a different way, because if we don't know the language and the questionnaire or the assessment, even uh, uh, it's not my native speaker or my uh, mother language, it will be, I, I'm not assessing whatever I want to assess. I'm ass assessing the language and that's not the idea. I'm trying to give another way to uh, assess whatever I want to assess. So why, what, and how, and just to remember, every student that sits in your classroom room needs from you something very different and that's they they're they right. Okay, so thank you. Thank you.